Good morning, everyone. Um, today we're looking at joining HTP. I think just to put a few things into uh, perspective is that HTP is a, has been in South Africa and been used in uh, water and drainage for many years. Most of the uh, training we do is on the drainage side, um, but the principles are exactly the same on uh, both pressure and drainage. So just starting off as to how HDP is made is that HDP is actually a petroleum product. So made from a base of oil and they apply intense heat to it. And this process is known as the cracking. And when it gets to over 900 degrees, the process uh, produces ethylene gases. From there, the gas molecules attach to form polymers and they then produce the polyethylene. So what that tells us right in the beginning is that this product is will burn and it burns very well. It actually burns like a, a candle if you put a lot of it onto a fire. So in buildings, it's quite important to make sure that you look at things like fire stopping and making sure that if there was a fire in the duct is that it would, uh, the HTP would help it along. However, the, the plus side on that is that it is not to toxic. So unlike gases that are released from other piping systems, which would actually kill you, this will just support the fire a little bit. Um, and if the installation is done properly, it shouldn't spread from floor to floor. HDP is such a versatile product is that we often see that we get into trouble with it, where people are using it in the wrong, uh, in the wrong way. And they believe because it can be welded, you can do anything with it. And it is quite scary to see um, how some people are actually installing HDP because they lack the basic understanding as to how it works. And I think there's uh, the industry has got a long way to get uh, educated into how to use it properly. We've seen guys welding it with a hot iron, like, you know, domestic iron. We've seen guys with a shovel on a fire, heating the pipes and putting it, uh, putting pressure on the pipe afterwards to try and join it. The advantages of HTP is obviously it's a very tough product. And once it's prefabricated or made up in pieces, you can throw it off a building and it will bounce provided you've done the welds correctly. If you were to ride over it, it'll come back to its shape. The other good thing about HDP is it's 100% recyclable. And when using it on the sites, is even the smallest pieces can be reused again, uh, joining in between junctions and bends and uh, et cetera. So your waste factor should be a, a lot uh, lower. It's very resistant to chemicals. Um, and as such, because it's a petroleum product and it's got a waxy finish to it, you cannot join it with anything like a glue, silicone, solvents. You can't even paint it. You can put the paint on, but it will come off uh, as the pipe expands and contracts. The next most important thing with HDP is to know that it has a high rate of expansion and contraction. And if you take this into consideration when using it, because if you don't allow for the pipe to move, your system will eventually either pull pieces of the, uh, the installation apart or it will fail itself. So I'll, um, I want to run through a couple of little videos with you and we'll switch backwards and forwards. There's more in the videos than what I would be able to present uh, through a PowerPoint. And also I think uh, there's a lot more to learn from it. Um, we have a new portal coming where all of these videos and a whole lot of other videos are done in African languages. So you'll be able to um, to watch the videos uh, in, in a chosen language. Hello, welcome to our presentation on HTTP piping, its uses, where it can be used, where it can't be used, and how to do the correct assembly and manufacture of the components into a plumbing system. As this is an overview into HDP and where it's used, we'll be dealing on both pressure and drainage. So we really have to fly through this uh, presentation and there are other modules which will be able to look in more detail as to uh, how to use both products. So the first the difference is that the low pressure piping is not designed for pressure, as its name would say, it is for drainage and normally uh, used in gravity drainage. The uh, Gabriel HCP piping can be used in uh, pressure installations for pump sewage. Note the wall thickness of the piping, and the piping is tempered to keep it straight. The other piping that we have is the uh, high pressure piping, 
This goes from a PN4, goes all the way up to PN40, and speciality pipes can be made as well. You'll note that the thickness is um, a lot heavier, and <clears throat> the pipe in for the bigger ball is made in straight lengths. For plumbing installations, HPP is the ideal product in that it has so many versatile properties and is abrasive resistant. It also resists most acids and is very long lasting. It can take extreme abuse where the pipes can be dropped or can be virtually ridden over by a vehicle and after a period of time they'll come back into their shape. HTP can be manipulated by heating and once the heating process is finished and it cools down, it will try and go back to its original state. Basic drainting methods of HTP uh, on the low pressure side on drainage is that we have various types of uh, joints. We have a butt weld joint, we have an expansion socket, a ring seal socket, a union coupler, an electrofusion joint, stainless steel coupling for joining unlike pipes, so PVC to HDP and passed iron to HDP. Over here you can see an example of an extension socket. Note the fixed point that is fitted into this band. That is to ensure that the fixed point is kept in one place and that the pipe is able to expand up and down due to expansion and contraction. Okay, we're moving on to pressure pipe. Leaving a gap in the middle to be able to install the planer and the heating element. The nuts of your clamp, so tighten that to ensure that you have the correct tension on the clamps. You'll note that the pipes have been cut as square as possible. And from here, we'll plane the two pipes. Pipes are then brought together to check for alignment. The heating element will increase in temperature until we reach a temperature of 220 degrees Celsius. In preparing the weld, uh, we complete a checklist where all of the data from the weld is recorded. The pieces of pipe being welded is an HDP 160 diameter with a wall thickness of 22.1 millimeters in a PN16. The weather is recorded, it is sunny and dry. The temperature is 28 degrees. The set temperature on the heating element will be 220 degrees and the actual temperature is 220 degrees. The bead formula and weld uh, pressure is recorded as per the welding tables. This is an example of the welding table. And as you can see, as we get into the 160, that's the wall thickness, 22.1, the bead forming pressure, the bead height that is required, and then the soak pressure, you see that is at 2.2 bar, the soak time is three minutes and 40 seconds. We then have 10 seconds to change over, and our pressure rising time, in other words, the period we need to take to get the pipe up to full pressure is 11 seconds, and our rolling pressure is 16.6 .6 bar, and the cooling time is 24 minutes. Temperature is now 220 degrees and we are now ready to weld. The heating element is inserted between the two pipes. The hydraulic unit then pushes the two pipes together. When this process happens, it is important to measure the drag pressure. When you have a long length of pipe, it obviously takes a certain amount of energy to get that pipe moving. The next process is to watch the bead being formed. 
and they require a height of 2.2 millimeters. You'll note that there's hardly any pressure on the uh, hydraulic unit at the moment. During the bead forming and heating up time is that the hydraulic unit is set on 2.2 bar. The next phase will be the change over where we remove the heating element. We then have 10 seconds to bring the two pipes together and we have to ensure that it is a gentle touch. And then we have a further 11 seconds to bring it up to full pressure of 16.6 bar. We then leave the well to cool. As we approach the three minute 10 mark, we are now getting ready to remove the element. The pressure is released on the hydraulic pack. And the element is removed. You see there's a good heat formed and the surfaces are perfectly flat. We then increase the pressure and now we have 11 seconds to take it up to maximum pressure. You can see as the pressure is applied, how the bead pushed out. Once we're up to the pressure, we then lock the machine to ensure that we have a pressure of 16.6 bar. We now set a uh, recorder for the cooling time, which is 24 minutes. Um, we will set an alarm and come back in 24 minutes. It is important not to uh, accelerate the cooling by putting in water or touching it. At this point is to put the welder's stamp on it and they can push that into the bead that will then identify who did the work. The balance of the documentation is completed and this will be kept for submission as part of the QA process. Another quality well completed. One of the things with uh, HDP in, and its uses is that on the pressure side, you can use it for um, reticulation on fire and water. And you can also um, <clears throat> use it for uh, in suspended, where you can use it for domestic water. However, you cannot use any polymer pipe for a fire installation above ground. Um, we see a lot of projects where guys are trying to do that and that uh, obviously creates a whole lot of problems. Next jointing method we're going to show you on HTP drainage is the electric fusion and Pumocho will run us through that process and he will tell us all the steps along the line. My name is Pumocho. I will show you how to bring the electrification company. First of all, we have to put your mouth for the tenth of the socket. Let's try to put it all around. So you can see where you have to scrape it. The best way is to put the marks like this. You can use the knife, give it a knife to scrape it exactly. Yeah, 
So we're going to move along. Uh, there was still quite a bit of that movie to um, to carry on with, and uh, we, we want to do a quick one on. The next thing that we're going to look at is uh, electrotusion or the high pressure piping. All of the fittings are barcoded, and you take the barcode and you scan the barcode, and it'll give you all the parameters that you need to do the weld. On the machine itself, you will see there's a whole display. And it comes with a scanner, and you scan the fitting, it will set the parameters, and with that you'll do your weld. Again, the most important part of the weld is the cooling process. If it's here, it must cool for X amount of minutes, you need to leave it for that period. We have a multi tool, which is like the FreeTech or the Ritmo uh, machine, and they will do all types of fittings. And then we have a grade specific, like this Plasson uh, Monomatic, which only does the Plasson load. The concept of doing the weld is simple, is that once you've scanned the code, it will uh, give you the start process, you put the two connections into the pins, and you will then push the start button, and the weld will carry on. We cover the electrofusion of pressure pipes in more detail in a uh, further a webinar and that can be viewed at your leisure or uh, as part of Tech Talks in the future. We're going to run through the basics of joining HTP drainage pipe and Zoran will take us through uh, that process. Hi, my name is Zoran. I want to show you how method of joining HTP, particularly we're going to do the butt valve. First of all, I would like to explain something about the machine because we find lots of people they are not very familiar with the machine. Each and every part of the machine is adjustable. It's HTP expands and contracts a lot. If you need the part in the morning, you set your machine. You don't need to use any force. With your two fingers, you can close them and it's secure in the Pipe Adjustable pipe support for different diameter of the parts. We're going to do one butt valve. Most important is your pipe support with your right hand, hold the cord on the pipe support. Correctly. Now, each and every HDP part and the fitting, as soon as the laser factory is oxidized. We have to remove oxidation of the pipe. This is the player, we're going to remove the layer of oxidation. Now we go to the To remove layer of oxidation. Check your part. Most of the guys, they're cutting the part with a 
hexal blade, which you will never be able to cut it 100% way. So the blade is like the lining, still little planing. It's not only removing the oxidation. If we're joining two pieces of part with the junction on one side and the pen, we have to get to the right side. Then we're using the pen just to get it to the right connection. We want to heat it up. Why we have to heat it up? HTP is made out of oil. Heating up, we're releasing all the molecules. Heating up, everybody saying is we're melting the part. We're not melting the part, we're preparing the part to be welded. In the book, we got dimensions and the heating up time, which is most important part of joining, doing the part well. This particular one is 110. We have to keep it for 63 seconds. We don't have to pressurize it. We want that part to touch the hot plate. Okay, cool. When they touch the hot plate, we want to soak the heat into the part. In the beginning, everybody should use, and everybody has got cell phone with a stopwatch. Just first couple of rounds you do with your stopwatch until you remember, and I promise you, as soon as your 63 seconds is up, your eyes is going to go onto the hot plate. You're going to see the size of the, of the bead. Somebody said matchstick, uh, but normally it's half of the whole thickness of the pipe. In the application technique book, do we have a column when it says heating up time, time until full pressure is applied. It's very important to, to know why somebody put that in the book. When we take the hot plate out, if you push it hard and quickly, what we're going to do, we're just going to push all the connected part out and we're going to just weld to the cold part of the part. If that weld is not done properly in, in time, expanding, contracting, it's going to break. Eventually. When you pressurize it, welding and cooling time is much as important as a heating up time. When we heat it up, all the molecules are free. When we pressurize it, as it's cooling down, all the molecules getting together and forming one longer piece of pipe. This particular pipe, 110, cooling time, welding and cooling time is five minutes. We don't force the cooling time. As soon as you pour the water, you try to cool it down quickly. What's going to happen? All the molecules are going to stop. They're not going to join together. And then, well, it's not done properly. The next method of jointing we're going to look at is the um, butt weld in my hand. And John will run us through that process and also tell us uh, where we can and can't uh, well by hand. Everybody is asking, can you weld HTP pipe by hand? Yes, you can. Obviously not pressure pipe, but the base pipes, we can weld it by hand. And we can weld it up to 75 maximum. The reason is, you have to apply the pressure. If you're holding one thing pipe, obviously, first you can't hold it. Then you have to have a constant pressure for five minutes. The pressure is much higher. The process is exactly the same. When you cut the part, you have to remove the layer. I think all of these videos, we'll make them available to IOPSA. And as I say, is that we, uh, we have a lot of them that are in Zulu. Um, we find most of our tools are used by the operators on site and not by the owners of the business. So we've had to do a lot of them where uh, when the guys come and hire machines or they get machines is that we WhatsApp the video to them 
and then they're able to watch the process so that hopefully they get to do it correctly. Obviously, anybody that needs that uh, access to that, just uh, either give myself a, a shout or through our OPSA. And as I say, we will make uh, those videos available. We also, um, any of the HTP drainage uh, installations is all our training is for free. And we either do them in groups or we come to the various sites if it's a big enough site and we do the training on site. And as I say, that has no cost for um, the company or individuals. And it's to promote and to get HTP done correctly. Um, so we're very lucky to have good sponsors and, and assistance to make sure we can offer that service. Cool, thank you very much. And thanks for everyone for participating.